Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be talking about plants and these wonderful little organisms, which is also why I'm wearing all green to support plants. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's our introduction to plants. We're going to begin with plant transport using xylem and phloem. So how do systems interact to perform the function of transport in plants? Roots, stems, and leaves, which are the organs of seed plants, are linked together by specialized tissue systems that run the length of a plant. Just like we have a heart and lungs and kidneys, plants have their own organs as well. There are three main types of tissues found in plants. Dermal, which is just like our skin, we call this our epidermis. Plants have dermal tissue as well. Vascular, which is transporting different substances such as water and nutrients. In us, our vascular system would be our arteries and our veins, transporting blood and nutrients throughout our body wherever we need them. And ground tissue or roots that help bring in those nutrients and water to disperse throughout the plant. So dermal tissue covers the plant, just like our skin or our epidermis covers us the dermal tissue covers the plant. Vascular tissue forms a system of pipe-like cells that support the plant and serve to transport water and nutrients. And ground tissue produces and stores food. So if you remember, the roots of plants are very rich in starch. Think about a potato. That's the root of the plant. And that's how plants store their food for later, just like we might store some of our food for later in our love handles. Xylem and phloem are the two main types of transport tissue within the plant. Xylem is a water conducting tissue and phloem con controls the nutrient flow. So the way I always remember the difference between these two, phloem, food. So I use a type of mnemonic device, phloem, food, and xylem transports water. Xylem and phloem form a vascular transport system that moves the water and the nutrients throughout a plant. So as you can see here, we have our xylem. It contains tracheid cells and vessel elements. And xylem transports the water. Phloem, remember phloem food. Phloem is what is responsible for transporting nutrients throughout the plant to wherever the plant may need them. So let's talk about xylem tissues. Seed plants have xylem cells called tracheids. So the tracheid would be right here. Tracheids are very long and narrow with tough cell walls that help to support the plant. Remember, cell walls are made out of a polysaccharide called cellulose. So as they mature, the tracheids actually die and they leave their cell walls. The cell walls contain a substance called lignin. Lignin is a complex molecule that resists water and gives wood much of its strength. So that's what gives trees that hard bark. Openings in the tracheid cell walls allow water to flow from cell to cell. Thinner regions of the walls allow water to diffuse from the tracheids to the ground tissue. The second type of xylem tissue is called a vessel element. So you can see here, this is a longitudinal section. Longitudinal means long. So a longitudinal section would be if I split right here, cut my arm in half, kind of gross, I know, and then fillet it open for you to see. So that's a longitudinal section. Over here, if we have a transverse section, transverse or cross section would be like if I sawed right through my arm here, and then I looked at the inside of it. So kind of like a circle. So the vessel element forms part of a continuous tube through which water can move. And then after the cells mature and die, they are left at both ends with slit-like openings through which the water moves freely. The next type of plant tissue is called phloem. Phloem is for food. Phloem is what transports the nutrients throughout the plant. So unlike the xylem cells, phloem cells actually stay alive when they're at their maturity. And the main type of cells are called sieve tube elements. So sieve tube elements which are arranged end to end forming sieve tubes. So we have a sieve tube element right here, 
are companion cells whose sole purpose is to help out the sieve tube elements. Right here is a cross section. We have our vessels, our sieve tube elements, and these little guys right here, these are the companion cells. So the end walls of the sieve tube elements have many holes through which the nutrients move from cell to cell in a watery stream. Companion cells, like I said, basically just help out those sieve tube elements. They support the phloem cells. Companion cells aid in the movement of substances into and out of the phloem. So where does the transport start? The transport of substances begins in the roots, way down here at the bottom. Active transport transports minerals and ions of dissolved nutrients from the soil root cell membranes. So remember that active transport requires energy. It's moving against the concentration gradient from a low concentration to a higher concentration. So it takes energy for that to occur. The high concentration of mineral ions in the plant cells causes the water molecules to move into the plant through osmosis. So right here, we have minerals being taken into the roots through active transport, which requires energy. Well, this makes the plant hypertonic. And remember, hyper sucks. So that hypertonic environment is going to suck water into the roots of the plant, where it's going to get dispersed to where the plant needs it. As mineral ions are pumped into root cells, water moves from the dermal tissue into the central vascular system. And remember, osmosis is a type of passive diffusion. It's moving from a high concentration of water, which in this case would be outside of the plant. But when the plant goes through that active transport of bringing minerals and ions in, the tree or the roots become more concentrated than the outside environment. So water begins to flow into the roots. So the Casparian strip. The Casparian strip forces water and minerals to move through the cell membranes of the endodermis cells rather than in between the cells. The Casparian strip enables the endodermis to filter and control both the water and the dissolved nutrients that enter the vascular cylinder and ensures the nutrients will not leak back out. So you see the Casparian strip right here. This long pink guy is the Casparian strip. The root pressure. The one-way passage of water and nutrients into the vascular cylinder produces a force known as root pressure, which helps water to rise above or upward from the root into the stem. So we have our endodermis, which is more internal, and then we have our epidermis. Right here are our root hairs. These are where minerals are absorbed as well as water. So we have water right here coming in through passive transport and minerals entering through active transport. Then the Casparian strip right here is helping to transport those. So how does water move from the roots all the way up to the leaves, especially on trees that are really, really tall? Well, active transport and root pressure cause water to move from the soil into the plant roots. The major force in the water transport system is the evaporation of water through the stomata in the leaves, and this process is called transpiration. As water evaporates, the cell walls within the leaf, they get dry out and they need more water, so they kind of suck water up. So you get this pool of water from the base of the tree or the plant all the way up to the top where the leaves are. As those cell walls dry up, they need to suck more water back in to fill them. So it creates this constant draw of water up into the plant. Capillary action. Now if you remember at the beginning of the year we did a water lab. We looked at cohesion, hydrogen bonding, adhesion, capillary action. Uh, we looked at water as a solvent, specific heat, all those properties of water. Well a couple of them aid in the transport of water and nutrients in plants. First one we're going to talk about is capillary action. So plant cell walls use some of the water's physical properties to pull water upward. 
the tendency of water to rise in a thin tube is called capillary action. So soon we're going to be doing a lab where we're going to place celery into water that we've dyed with food coloring. So as you see right here, we put a celery stalk into some food colored water of red. That red food coloring dye has been soaked up through the plant. This plant is transpiring through stomata on the leaves, which is drawing water up into the xylem, and it's going to continue to move up towards the leaves, which is where the water is needed. So eventually, it's going to suck all of the water, which contains the red food coloring, up into the leaves of the celery. So capillary action, basically moving along that tube, creating this upward force. So again, right here, we have water lost through the process of transpiration, and then capillary action in the stem of the plant, bringing water from the roots all the way up to the leaves. The next two types of forces we're going to talk about are adhesion and cohesion. So water is attracted to the walls of the tube, or in this case, the xylem, by adhesion. It sticks to something. Just like tape and glue, we call those adhesives. They're sticky. So the water sticks to the side of the xylem as it flows up. The property of cohesion is when water molecules stick together. So cohesion, companion. We're a little happy couple. Water only goes with water for cohesion. So those two water molecules are going to come together and form a cohesive little bond. They're going to share each other. That's what makes water such an awesome solvent. Um, you know, we have the property of cohesion. So cohesion makes water stick together through the hydrogen bonds. So again, adhesion is water sticking to something else. In this case, the xylem portion of the plant. The cohesion is when the water molecules stick to themselves. So when transpiration removes some water from the exposed cell walls, strong adhesive forces in the xylem tissue pull in water from the wet interior of the leaf and move it through the plant by capillary action. Next, we're going to talk about the pressure flow hypothesis. So the pressure flow hypothesis explains the method by which phloem, or sap, is transported through the plant from a sugar source, meaning where it's stored, to a sugar sink, meaning where it's depleted. And for those of you that don't know what sap is, if you've ever smashed into a tree with a sharp object like a hatchet or an ax, sounds kind of barbaric, that oozy, sticky stuff that comes out, that's the sap of the tree. So changes in the nutrient concentration drive the movement of fluid through the phloem tissue in directions that meet the nutritional needs of the plant. So basically, we have water in the xylem going into the phloem, which makes things flow a little bit more easier. Phloem is responsible for transporting the food wherever it's needed. So it will go from a source, typically the roots of the plant, to a sink, wherever it's needed, where there's a depletion of it. Active transport, again, active meaning it requires energy. Active transport moves those sugars into the sieve tube from the surrounding tissues. Water then flows by the process of osmosis. And remember that osmosis is passive transport of water across a semi-permeable membrane. This creates pressure in the tube at the source of the sugars. So, if another region of the plant needs sugars, they are actively pumped out of the tube and into the surrounding tissues. Osmosis then causes the water to leave the tube, reducing the pressure in the tube at such places. The result is a pressure-driven flow of the nutrient-rich fluid from the sources of the cells, or the sugars, to the places in the plants where the sugars are used or stored, the sink cells. So again, right here, we have xylem transporting our water. The water goes into the phloem to help basically dilute out the sugars and make them easier to transport. They go from the source through active transport into the phloem where they are transported into the sink. So this concludes our version of transport in plants. Stay tuned for plant hormones and reproduction. I'll see you guys soon.